Hello everyone, I'm Alper Markov, and today we have a treat in an interview with the renowned Planeswalker artist, well, she does all sorts of stuff, Magali Villeneuve. So, I know you want to see the interview, and I do too, so let's get to it. <laughs> okay, I get you too, good, great, awesome. All right, thank you so much for um, taking the time to do this today. And thank you for inviting me. <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to try to do is pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, and I have something in case I mess it up. I have a little thing here, but okay, all right. This is this is so tough. Um, is it uh, Magali Vineuve? Oh, almost there. Oh, I can't it that way. <laughs> so how do I? Say Shame. <laughs> I did my little. Shame. <laughs> so how do you pronounce it then? I, I heard much more than that, so it's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, actually, you get the first name right. Uh, last name is Villeneuve. Villeneuve, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I swear, the guys in the interviews, I, did they, I, I thought it could have been that, but the, I, I feel like such a schmuck. But, but anyway, I, I knew I was going to mess it up, so I figured that would be a good way to start it out. But you, you know, the, the fun fact is that uh, some of my clients even sometimes misspell my name on the actual products released oh wow <laughs> they tend to to write it Villanueve, you know the, the mm -hmm. Spanish way but no no that's not like that <laughs> so no funny. i mean i make sure with anybody's names i'm like i copy and paste from like their website from their bio and yes <laughs> <laughs> that way there's no mistakes but um i guess my first question is when, how old were you when you started doing art what was the age that i was 12. and uh, what 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 was the what was the reasoning but what was the impetus behind that uh the the reason was uh that at this age uh, i i've been to the movies and i saw beauty and the beast by disney mm -hmm. and it was like a huge discovery to me N not because of the story itself but because of the um, characters designs and uh, uh, how beautiful it looked to me mm -hmm. and first thing I did when I got back home was take a, a piece of paper and start drawing, not the beauty, but the beast. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yes. And uh, th that's how I, you know, and, and the, fun, the fun thing is that uh, immediately the drawing was pretty good. While I never used to draw that much before that. And uh, I was hooked. That's how it happened. All of a sudden. <laughs> was um is art in something that runs in your family? Uh, my um, elder brother was pretty good at drawing, but uh, it it became very serious for me. Yeah. Um, who would you say influences you the most? Um, what other artists would you say influence you the most? I know that you mentioned Caravaggio, but I saw a lot um, of like uh, Waterhouse. Uh, his uh, Lady of Shalott, I see similarities there too. Uh, it, it's a really good, uh, you've got a really keen eye because um, the, so I don't know how it's pronounced in English, but I also get a lot of influence from the Pre-Raphaelite. Raphael, Pre, Pre yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, they are also a big influence for me, but that's not it. Um, uh, we were talking about Beauty and the Beast. Uh, one of my very first influences was the lead animator, Glenn Keane, who is a superstar for uh, in Disney movies. Mm -hmm. He made it some of the most incredible characters in all the Disney productions. And so that, that was the first artist who really had a big influence on me. And uh, whoever knows his work can see some hints in the way I tend to draw characters, faces and all. I, I can I can really actually now that you mention it, I can see that it would it would be tricky to see without having that sort of known, but I, it make that makes sense. Yeah, it, it was really because you know, uh, as I've never been to any art school or never took any art lesson, I had to learn everything by myself. And my first way to learn things was to copy other artists' works. And his works were the first I started to copy like crazy. I mean, so right. it probably, yeah, 
Well, they say that to get better at something, well, like, for example, if you want to get better at sports, the best thing you can do is play against somebody who, who will wipe the floor with you. Or Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely agree with that. I think that you, you cannot find who you are as an artist if you didn't take the time before to explore what the others do. I mean, the best, well, how did the best became the best? That's a mm -hmm. good question to ask yourself, to learn things and to explore fields you wouldn't explore by yourself. So I think it's an interesting way to learn, especially if you cannot afford to go to art school, which was my case. Uh, so um, so that was the reason behind it was um, art school was just too expensive because, it, I mean, it's really impressive that you have no formal training. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the money reason was absolutely the, the reason why I, <laughs> I didn't go to art school. So, but I was really determined so that, that I wouldn't let that stop me. So yeah, it, it took a while. I mean, compared to some of my fellow artists, I always thought that I was a bit late uh, because I started my career pretty late. I was 26 when I started as a pro which is old, I think, but maybe it's just me. <laughs> so yeah, it, it took me a while before I decided to, learn, to, to start as a pro, to, to build a portfolio, to work hard enough to, to feel ready, to feel up to the challenge of being a professional artist. And, but at the same token, um, you, when you got, maybe you got started a little bit later, but you certainly made up for it in time because in a matter of like what seems, you know, minutes you were uh doing all these iconic pieces and and it's, and i like to talk about how the fact you focus on women and i like your point of view that you talk about and please i'm sorry that there there's somebody doing the lawn outside i don't know if it's picking it up but it's uh, it, so. okay good because i'm like i'm i'm like <laughs> i'm like oh, <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> like not during this interview please so um I noticed that with the way you draw women, um, that you you're pr you you say that you prefer to draw women. You've always been fascinated to draw women. Why do you think that is? To be honest, I'm not sure. I really have a reason for that. The main reason I can find is that to me, uh, women's beauty is something just fascinating, and there is no end to trying to translate that. There are so many different types of feminine beauty. That's mm -hmm. something I cannot get enough of. So that's the only reason I can find for you. It's just, that's how I, I am. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's an answer. I mean, and what I also found interesting, you wrote in an interview that, that you were trying to bring more of a realistic standpoint to fantasy in a sense that, and I'm going to phrase this much more vulgar than you did, but it, it, it kind of blew my mind. You said that um, basically, you know, where there are breasts, there should be gravity. And there's not a lot of that. There's, you know, like busty women with, you know, anatomy that will not be agreeing with the place that it's at. Uh, you know, I think that um, maybe it's easier to feel that when you are a woman yourself. I, I think there is, um, how can I say that? I've always felt it as something violent as a woman to see such unrealistic representations. I mean, uh, when, uh, when an artist is giving you um, a representation, a human representation, you, you feel the need to identify a little. Absolutely. And how can you identify to such impossible women? So my goal is, you know, uh, when I try to explain such things, there is always someone who's going to come and tell me, yeah, but you're saying that, but all you women are beautiful, blah, 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 blah. But it's, it's a little more subtle than that. Um, as an illustrator, people wouldn't read my characters correctly if they were too uh, original, I think, if mm -hmm. they were too realistic. So you have to find that balance between iconic representations, but realistic representations. Right. And it, 
it, you know, it, it can come through with details such as normal bodies, I mm -hmm. mean, as you were mentioning, um, some uh, face features. I'm trying not, it, it's only details, but I'm trying not to have always the same, uh, you know, nose shape or, you know, facial contour here. You know, mm -hmm. it's, um, it, it doesn't take much, but I think that, you know, having a respectful and realistic approach of women, but it's also true for male characters, I think, honestly, is the least we can do now, because I mean, the 80s and the 90s, mm -hmm. so it was cool while, while it lasted, but it's old now. So right. I think today we should focus, especially as, you know, um, all the IPs I'm working on are so big in people's lives. And if they are that big, that's because people need to find like, you know, a shelter from the outside world. And for the shelter to be a good shelter, they have to be able to identify. So that's why I'm trying to do, giving them something they can, they can relate to and not feel like, oh, you know, can't be me. I have a good example for that, but it's not, I mean, it's not just um, thanks to me because I, I only did, you know, the envelope of the character. But a good example is Narset, mm -hmm. because uh, she's autistic, as you know it. And once uh, someone, uh, it was a father who came to me and told me, you know, my, my little daughter is autistic too. And it's very important for me to have this card signed for her. So uh, one day I can show her the card and explain, see, She's like you, but she's still beautiful and she's still a hero. So you can be strong enough to do something as well. And you could feel that it was as important for himself as a father than it was important to give that to, to his daughter. Right. I mean, it's, it's almost know, I, like... I think that, you know, I think the message wouldn't have been that strong if Narset had been too, you know unrealistic cleavage and boo like that and that, right. you know it, she, she wouldn't have been that believable without without it so yeah i think it's a, it's an important way to go now as artists yeah. it's yeah and i think people who make the argument well all the all your you know paintings are beautiful well but beauty is not an unrealistic thing beauty is everywhere and Absolutely. Absolutely. So you can't argue that that that's unrealistic. It's also you you do have to, you know, say like, well, you can't really go totally realistic because it's fantasy. You can't have somebody who's very plain being a planeswalker. It's just not going to work. So I think people who who would argue that, I mean, like that's just not that doesn't that doesn't work for me. I mean, it's all a matter of balance, I think, and. Uh... And, and I am aware that it's taking a lot of efforts because I, you know, I'm a 80s, 90s child myself. So I, I grew up with all these influences like heroic fantasy women with <laughs> armors that- the, In the balloons. Oh, yeah. But it, it, I think it may seem like something that's been told countless times before, but you know, when I see some illustrations still today, I can feel that we are not quite there. So <laughs> there is still a lot of efforts to do to, to change that. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's like you have, you believe that you, and I think that it's true that you have an obligation to do this for like your, the audience. Yes, because um, I wouldn't feel that way if I hadn't seen and read by, my, by myself how important it was to people. I mean, I think the, the, the comment I receive the most often after I'm publishing an illustration, no matter the illustration is, oh, your character is so cool. And she's, I mean, I, I would like to be her. I would like to be him because I feel there is something going on and she, she's so cool and she's, she seems so strong and she, so, I can feel that 
that's what I'm trying to do is going through. So that's what motivates me to, you know, to go on like that and to, and to show. Uh, one day I received also a comment. You receive all kinds of comments, but it was a guy. I'm sorry, but <laughs> he was telling me, you know, yeah, you girls are cute, but they are always dressed up here. I said, yes. <laughs> And then what's the problem? <laughs> I mean, and uh, I, I think that, you know, uh, being sexy can happen wearing clothes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I mean I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to paint nuns. Uh, I mean, and I think that the, the women I paint still are beautiful and they can be sexy and all, but to 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 translate that i do not feel the need to show a lot of skin because i think that when you are you know skilled enough you can do better than that right it's it's that that's not i mean like it's that's astonishing that somebody would come up and say well you're like evaluating them as though they are pieces of meat it's mm -hmm. like you're I missing the I'm, point i i'm not even sure it's well i hope I mainly hope it's not because, you know, I hope that's not what people think. No, no, I, I think that that particular hope, person was treating yeah. it like that. I think, you know, that people have really bad habits as far as fantasy illustration is concerned. They've seen the same thing so often for so long that sometimes it can be a little, okay, what's happening? This woman is wearing clothes where I am. <laughs> yeah you know so i think it's it's you know all changes take time and i think to change people's point of view on what a female fantasy character should be it's going to take time at least for some of the of the audience i think lots of people have already been through all that and they really enjoy what's going on right now so it's no, it's important to me because I, I, one of the main reasons why I really wanted to talk to you, and I was lucky enough to interview a brand new uh, magic artist, Sarah Finnegan. But prior to Sarah, the, you guys are the only two women in magic that I've had a chance to talk to, and it, it, it is important to get that point of view because, like, I, for like I said, you know, as a man, I can't really, I, I, don't, I would not realize that an anatomy is is defying gravity because I don't have that anatomy. Yeah, and I think that you know. Um, I tend to believe it's no coincidence if I happen to paint women so often in magic. It's not something I'm asking myself because as you probably know, we don't get to choose what we paint. The art directors choose for us uh, because they know us really well and they know our skills and what we are good at and what we are not that good at. So. I'm not choosing and I'm not asking, okay, give me women. That's what I want to do all the time. No, that, that's not like that. It's just, it's just that I tend to think that they find in my approach and in some other of my fellow artists approach. Uh, Excuse my dogs. Okay, great. Sorry. Okay. It's I fine. A little scratch beneath the United States. Baby. <laughs> What's that? You, I, I think you should scratch it here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Thing. So, yeah, and I, I think that um, they, as I was saying, they are finding that my approach is the approach they want to have for women. That that is a respectful and believable approach. I th I think so too. I mean, they're 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 very epic, and uh, one of my favorites is um, Thalia personally. Um, and I love the one that you did of her. In in and, and it was it's actually kind of I think it was a even a push forward for you. It was a new area that uh, seeing the character actually mid attack, like with mm -hmm. rage and with the fire that we we hear we heard a lot about from Thalia, but we didn't get to see. And that's one of my favorites. I mean, I. I I, I was the uh, was the process for making that was was that storyline told to you or what kind of um, elements did you bring to it? Uh, which one are you talking about? Because I've not made just one. Yeah, you've it's the um, I I'm, just, I'm blanking on the Thalia's name, but um, it is the one from the secret layer, the one where she is attacking Brazilla, the oh. the 
Eldrazi. Mm -hmm. And that one I, I just love because you, you get to see Thalia in action being the badass that she is. She's the protector of her people. Yeah. Um, for that one, the direction was really to find, you know, uh, like an iconic moment of her being the hero she is, even in such a desperate situation. Um, you know, whenever you are painting Thalia, I think one of the most important thing to grasp is this, you know, light versus darkness, you know, uh, clashing like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever I get to paint that character, and she is one of my favorites, I gotta say. So uh, I, I always try to, uh, even if she's always in pretty gloomy environments, because that's <laughs> how that's where is. she lives. Yeah, um, she always had to appear like you know, pure light. Uh, you know, uh, getting through darkness and uh, and yeah, th th that was my main focus in this piece was to have her, you know, so so strong and yet so graceful, and mm -hmm. with you know, light coming off, showing that she is about to win even if the creature is huge and even if it seems you know, like she's not going to do that alone. <laughs> right. But, and and uh, yes, that's uh, it, it was a pretty tricky one because I am not a big creature maker, I got to say. So it was a bit of a challenge for me, but I, I was totally, I, I was really motivated to try to to get something cool out of that because I really wanted to show how epic she can be. So yeah, it's like uh, it really is more. It's so epic. It it makes makes you think Thalia almost deserves to be a planeswalker because of that kind of power. Like she has, she she doesn't seem just like a, a creature. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I mean, I've got a funny side comment to if if people are listening to me, please. Stop telling me she looks like Shakira. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's unbearable. <laughs> Shakira? Yes. Every single time one of my Thalia illustration is released. I mean, there are three of them now. Oh, you, 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 uh, you use Shakira as a reference. Mm -mm. No, no, guys, you know, I'm 40 years old. I think, uh, you know, <laughs> Fangirling is way behind me. So right. it's not just because she has a lot of hair and all that. She is Shakira. So, I mean, please. <laughs> I, I mean, I would have never, I mean, she looks, I mean, she looks like she's based in Eastern Europe, like to me. It, she looks, yes. <laughs> she's, she's a European. I mean, like it's, people are, people are funny. Yes. No more Shakira, everybody, because that's not, that's, it's, she's not. She's not Shakira, Shakira. And, and no more Shakira, and I can see the Chandra behind you. Mm -hmm. No more Scarlett Johansson either, please. That <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, I, 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 I think that it's funny, but some, sometimes it's frustrating because I can feel that people need to find a comparison in real life for characters, maybe because my characters have a realistic feel to them. Well, but they, they have said, such an incredible face to them. It they they do they do feel like real people. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's why it, it, you know it brings that kind of comments. But it can also be frustrating for the artist because you I get to spend a lot of time trying to paint my faces. You know, it's not something I do in like half an hour. So I'm trying, you know, to find something you know cool face, cool expression, and all. And I'm not using you know. Uh, for Chandra, for example, the Torch of Defiance, the reference for her is my husband. Really? Yes, really. Because the reason why is because whenever I'm painting Chandra, especially, uh, yeah, she's a woman and she had to look, you know, really badass at all. And I think that sometimes it can be too girly to have a woman posing for that type of moments. So I for see. me, the good way to find the right balance be between the beauty of the character, but also her strengths, is to have a man posing like that. So there won't be any, you know, uh, hip thing going on and all. It's just going to be like, <clears throat> you know, I'm strong and I'm going to kick asses and all. <laughs> so 
so it's my husband. <laughs> That's interesting. That's really interesting, but that makes total sense because it is natural for men to have, like, they're going to stand with the broader shoulders and you just then can then narrow it down to the proper female size, and but yes. still have that stance. Absolutely. And, and if I had been the one posing for that, I know that the, the pose would have been a little more, you know, that's yeah. what I was looking for. <laughs> um, and that leads me to one of my other questions um, with the faces. Now, I'm fascinated by how people, you know, people like you can create faces out of nothing. So how much are they based off of, are they based off of real people? Are they completely um, made up? Do you take different elements? Uh, how, how do you do that? Because I look at Sarah the um, from Modern Horizons, and you did two shots of her and it's like, it is the same person, you know, down to a T and, I, and I'm fascinated by how you can make that out of the ether. I think that it, it comes from the, you know, b before I chose to be a, an illustrator, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to work for uh, animated movies, still, you know, Disney, Beauty and the Beast, la la la. So that was the first thing I wanted to do. And I learned a lot from that. That is the way to how to make a, a, how to create a character design from the face to the costume and the silhouettes. It's also important. So very early, I learned how to create a face and to make the face look like look the same from one drawing to another. That's something I'm always like I always liked to do. So when I got to uh, redesign Sarah from for Modern Horizons, I first started with you know rough uh, doodles of the character and especially the face, how I wanted her to look. So it was a pretty you know um, not really realistic approach, but that's that's how I start usually. And then I I started working for the actual pieces. So that's the moment I started to define the pose and all. And when I get the actual pose, I either photograph myself. It's mostly for, you know, eye, nose and ear placement, you know, depending on the pose and all. And sometimes I also take, you know, eyes here and lips here and, you know, things I find interesting. I'm, not using, you know, actresses or singers be because I know that people will recognize. So I, I tend to go for, you know, nobodies. Mm -hmm. and, and then I, I build the character. I mean, they, they are really made from scratch. So likenesses can happen, but in general, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. Because I mean, who would be looking for people telling you, oh, she looks like, no, 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 that's, that's not what I want. It happens, I can understand that. But no, no, they really, they really are created from scratch and they really are created from, I mean, I have a, you know, I have a goal when I start, especially when I got to redesign or design a character. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's really fascinating to me. And, and also what you did, um, jumping up to what you did with the Song of Ice and Fire, um, that must have been tricky. I don't know, had you been watching the show when you got the assignment or how, I mean, it's kind of hard to miss. Oh my goodness. Oh. They, okay, so <laughs> I guess they decided, we'll cut, we'll cut that out, but I okay. guess they decided to test the fire alarms today in my apartment <laughs> without notifying me. You are so lucky today. I am, well, I am lucky, <laughs> Sammy. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh. No problem. I think it's fun. It's real life, you know. You're at home, so <laughs> things can happen. This is so nuts. Oh God, this will be on the B sides. Um, Sammy, stop it, buddy. Okay, I know it's bad. I got it. Okay. So we'll try that again, Sammy. Um, I'm, and I can't yell at my dogs because like they just went through hell. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Song of Ice and Fire. Um, you had. How, 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 uh, I guess, how connected to the show had you been? Because that must be tough to do something that's so iconic already and then to do these characters, but do them so unique the way you did them. Uh, when I started working on uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, it was pretty early in my career. And it was actually long before the show even existed. 
Oh, okay. So when I made my first pieces, it's because I, I've been working for a Song of Ice and Fire through a few years. Uh, so when I really started, it was for the Fantasy Flight's um, LCG card game uh, for A Game of Thrones. That's when I painted my first pieces and all. Thanks to uh, the work I made for the card game, uh, uh, Random House uh, asked me after that to uh, make illustrations for uh, you know, A World of Ice and Fire and for the official calendar. So that I think the illustrations you know are from these uh, either either the calendar or the, the 2016 calendar. calendars, the ones that I saw. And so these came later, and uh, so for me, I already had uh, time to build my own vision. But you know, also um, uh, the, the first years of my career, I was a um, it, I was an illustrator for uh, books. So I was making mostly covers, you know, or illustration, uh, illustrations for inside the books and all, before I started working for the card thing and all. And uh, so for me, it's always been something really natural to read a book and to try to imagine characters from that. So even if the show had already existed, it wouldn't have been a problem for me. And mm -hmm. I remember that when uh, the, the show started uh, on TV, I was still working for Song of Ice and Fire. And we received words from the publishers, please try to not make them look like, you know. But, but I mean, it, it's really easy because um, I think uh, whenever you are uh, reading a book, everyone actually has its his own um, image of the characters right so i only had to let that go what you can see is how i how they are in my imagination and even if i think that the the show really did a wonderful job they still don't quite look as i imagined them myself but it's also funny to see that sometimes both versions are pretty close yeah I think that's also the the magic of the writer who made them so precise and so alive that some, at some point we all agree on how such character should look and all. So I think it, it wasn't even a challenge, but it was a fun thing to, to do and to see. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, uh, for example, it's pretty obvious for Jon Snow, even if my Jon Snow is still more delicate and than the one from the show, they still have that mm, tiny likeness. Mm -hmm. that you can't help that because Jon Snow is Jon Snow. Whatever that, you, that you deep sadness say. about them, they both have that sadness in their eyes. Yes, yes, and you know, and, and there is also you know the hair and the costume, and I mean, you cannot fight that. <laughs> no. And what I find impressive, too, is that you managed to make the Lannisters look sympathetic, which is a tough thing to do because, I mean, I know you love them, right? But I love them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, that is that is an interesting thing to love because they are, I'd say, outside of Jamie, it's a dark family. Mm. I, 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 I've always found it, it's, maybe it's just me, but it's easier for me to love the things or the people that really are not made to be loved. Because I think that there is, I, I really like when the character has a really dark side and really something that, you know, oh, that you, you, you would feel the need to punch him in the face and all. But I think that's, it, it's more interesting because it brings some, the emotion they bring are so much stronger. It's easier than to, you know, to, to let that out, to make an illustration than, than it is for a more, you know, obviously nice character. At least for me, it works better. It's more efficient, that type of character for me. And I really love, uh, I mean, and I think that the publisher I worked with knew that because I, I got to paint lots of Lannisters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I, that kind of makes sense now that you mentioned it, because it's, I'd imagine like it sort of is the yin to the magic yang because you do, uh, in magic do so many admirable like sort of you know the good guy characters um mm. more or less 
So mm -hmm. there's not a lot of chances for you to go to really dark characters, although. Yes, that's true. And that's also why, because I could, you know, um, it's, um, it doesn't make my life always really easy to work on so many different IPs. I could concentrate on magic only, but uh, I mean, I love my work so much that I want to explore as many different things as possible. So whenever someone is coming at me for a Game of Thrones or for the Farseer trilogy, uh, or things like I, I cannot help it. I gotta give it a try because it gives me the occasion to to explore things I don't get to work on on magic. So yes, and you were mentioning the darker things and uh, more realistic things sometimes also for which was the case for Robin Hobbs books. They are they have this realistic feel to them that I really love. And it, it was a really different, you know, universe for me and it's refreshing. So that, that's why I'm not just uh, staying inside the magic uh, field. Uh, I want to explore as many different things as possible, especially because I mean, <laughs> for, for someone who started from nothing <laughs> in my career, I mean, it's just like, is this real life? I mean, all these wonderful projects coming at me, I cannot say no. <laughs> right, I mean, George R.R. George R. Martin calls, you, you pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, Sorry, what did you? I was like, uh, when George R.R. R. Martin calls, you pick the phone up. I mean, yes, you can't say I, no to that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and, and especially because uh, it's almost like he did pick up the phone because for example, when I got to work on the calendar thing, uh, that's because he asked for that he wanted me to have a, a calendar so i mean <laughs> yeah no no I, i'm not gonna take on that project i'm not interested <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm no. gonna pass i'm gonna pass <laughs> oh no i mean no. i deserve better than that <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah because there's yeah because what could be like nothing i mean game of thrones what's that who's heard of that I mean. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> But um, it's um, it's it's interesting, and um, I, I guess, but also, what's kind of cool too is that you get to do concept design though on a lot of the the magic sets. Now, how did you pick up the fact that I mean, how do you pick up um, like not just art, but then you know how to dress people and you know how to to do all of that? I mean, were you always a fashionista in a sense, or how how did that how does that organically grow? Uh, you know, as far as I am concerned. As a girl, I'm really not a fashionista at all. Uh, that's not something I would apply to myself. I, I don't have a huge dressing room or, you know, but uh, on the other side, I've always been really interested in uh, high fashion designers, um, but purely for, uh, you know, the artistic side of it. Um, and we were talking about influences. Uh, I, I'm, um, find I find whew, whew, French girl talking in English. No, you do. No, stop. You, I, you should hear my French. It's <laughs> all. Oh, that's an effort for me. So I, I I tend to find a lot of my inspiration in uh, in fashion, actually, especially for whenever I'm working on concept art. I I mean. Uh, my references are more on that type of things than on, you know, I don't really look at what other fantasy artists do to find my inspiration. I'd rather build something else from real world and try to give it a little fantasy twist. Uh, that's probably why I, they are always so well dressed. <laughs> no matter, I, I mean, for example, the Golgaris, are a good example mm -hmm. because when when we got to work on the um, the Ravnica set, uh, I was part of the concept art team for the new Ravnica, and um, I immediately started working on the Golgari because the the art brief was it was calling me. Uh, so because they were they were given a giving us you know examples of where we should go take a look to find inspiration. And one of the 
uh, one of the things they suggested was that we should take inspiration from uh, Alexander McQueen's uh, work. Okay. It's, it's a designer I absolutely love. So for me, it was really something natural to try to, you know, to, to explore that and create something that would be purely fantasy from, from it. So, yeah. And I mean, you, I can almost see McQueen doing, I mean, it, it wouldn't be a crazy thing to see him taking his own interpretation of the Magic the Gathering, like, look, and, and seeing that on the runway would be really cool. In a way, what, what he does is pretty close to what you can see in some fantasy illustrations, because he has this really uh, organic approach with, you know, with... Um, uh, fab flowy fabric and then sometimes like uh, his silhouettes look like that there are um, uh, branches growing out of the out of the silhouette and all it's uh, he's got really it's he himself probably finds influence and inspiration in fantasy I think because I mean it's it's all there when you take a look at his work it's uh, it, all all of the things he do almost look like it would be, you know, you would add a piece of armor here and here and you have a fantasy character. It's almost like that. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's in like, cause like, I mean, Vraska just looks so fantastic. I mean, with the the the, the fact that her, like the, the, you know, her clothes are also plants and this like, like vines and you can't even tell whether or not she's coming out from the stone. I mean, it's a very eerie sort of thing. She's almost like emerging from this stone and, and just show, like looking at you with that gaze, it's like, I, I can kill you, like, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I'm beautiful, but I am dangerous. And I think that, you know, um, it was a really interesting challenge working on the Golgari, for example, because I really had to, to be so, you know, elegant and, you know, high fashion, high fashion. but still uh, the challenge was to make them look believable and to make their uh, costume look practical if they had to, you know, to get into a fight or something like that. Let's put Vraska aside because she was like, she had to look like a queen. So of course she has a long dress and it's not, maybe not that practical, but as far as the rest of the guild is concerned, you had to uh, take all these, you know, fungus and organic elements and make them, you know, uh, still look like it's practical armor practical attire to, to get into a fight, but still they had to look elegant and beautiful, you know? So it was really, again, the matter of balance. And I really did enjoy working on dynamics. It was really interesting work. Were the um, heads that, I, cause I, I didn't notice and I, I, I put everything up that I'm talking about will be in the, the video, but um, on her throne, there are two heads that are, are, are on the base of the throne. And I'm assuming that were those supposed to be people who she assassinated, who she turned to stone? That, uh, that's a type of detail uh, wizards didn't ask for. They were, I think that in the brief, maybe they were mentioning that if in the background we could have one or two statues and all, but I'm not even sure it was something that, that was really had to be included. In, but I, I personally really like this nice touch uh, because in the previous illustrations I had seen of uh, of Baraska, I, I really liked that, that whenever you had this guy that was uh, petrified, You're right? Her, I, I really like that. I, I think it's really it's uh, it's her. I mean, it corresponds to her so much. So I really want to, to add this, this little touch. So yes, for me it's, uh, oh, let's take this guy head. And That's awesome. In the throne, because I think it's so beautiful as a decoration. <laughs> I mean, and she would, and there is something like, uh, there is something grotesquely beautiful about it. I mean, it, I mean, let's, I mean, people have bust, you know, bustiers of statues everywhere. It's like not, it's not yeah. that uncommon, I guess. <laughs> Just you never know whether or not they were actually real people. <laughs> and but you just said, you know, you can feel that these guys didn't have the, the best times of, of their life before. <laughs> no. No. 
and that's and I was, was going to say I don't think dress I don't think Vraska needs to be concerned about her dress because that's her stone like gaze that can do that. I mean, she doesn't have to do anything but look at you, and then you're you're da- you're done. I mean, that that's so powerful. I really like that type of character who are so strong but still don't really seem to care. I mean, it's so cool. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and so I guess and we're, we're kind of cl- closing in on the end, so I won't keep you for too much longer. But um, I wanted to know a little bit more about uh, just a couple more things. Now, I know that you get assignments, but I have talked to other artists and they have made requests um, for pieces themselves. Um, is, there, is there a particular piece that if you could make a request, who would it be? Uh, would it be um, a planeswalker or, or anything really? Um, actually, the truth is I, I get to work on many things I wanted to work on without having to ask. The truth is I would never really dare ask for anything in particular. That's how I am. I, you know, I'm just, you know, I do what I'm asked to do and I'm so happy with that that I wouldn't want to ask for more. But, um, Uh, I mean, a year or two ago, I would have told you that I wanted to paint Liliana, but it did happen. It so, did, yeah, it did. And I think among the the remaining Planeswalker, I really do like Jace a lot. Uh, I think he is really interesting, but mostly because uh, my knowing of magic uh, goes back as far as when I was a teenager in high school and I could see uh, people, uh, the guys uh, playing magic between uh, lessons and all. And uh, that, that's when I, you know, I was peeking uh, above their shoulder and they were, what are you playing? I was not really interested in the game, but I was really interested in the illustrations. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got I, I to learn that this game existed. And then through the years after that, I. I was keeping an eye on, on the magic and we started to see the, that generation of Planeswalker with Chandra and Jace and, and Chandra and Jace in particular. I always thought they were so cleverly designed. I mean, they are so iconic. Mm-hmm. I mean, they look like and no other they look like no other. They are, you know, it's like, for me, it's like, I don't know what would be the comparison, but it's, it's, it's like, I don't know, Mickey Mouse. I mean, right. Mickey Mouse, it's Mickey Mouse forever and no one can do that again. And I think it's the same for this character. You just take a look at them for one second and you know who they are. And uh, I, I think that Jace is just genius work as far as design is concerned. So I, I, got a, I got to paint Jace every now and then on yeah. cards, never as a planeswalker card. And th- that's something I would like to do. But aside from that, I'm I'm spoiled by magic, so I cannot really ask for more. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I that's very, it's, again, it's, I, I'm impressed by the way a lot of you um, are so humble, but I mean, I, I, I would love to see uh, uh, you do Jace, that, that would be cool, I mean, uh, it would be a, a fun thing to see. It would, I mean, I, I would love to see you do all of them just because I'd, I'd like to see your take. Um, mm-hmm. um, and you, you like, I think between you and Kieran Yanner, you guys are like the planeswalker, like people, like I just, um, and like, wow, they've done so many of them. I mean, like War of the Spark alone, I was like, did you sleep at all during that? I, I gotta say that the War of the Spark uh, time was a really rough time for me. Um, I mean, schedule wise, it was, I, it, it's strange because it's somewhere between a good memory and really bad memory, but it wasn't just about magic because at the time I was working on the War of the Spark Planeswalkers. And then I had so many other things to do aside that. That's the moment that, you know, when I look at my War of the Spark Planeswalkers today, I'm like, <laughs> I could have done better than that. That's how I tend to, oh. you know, I, I have some regrets about these cards. Uh, I mean, I admit it. I'm not always 
very happy with my work. I really did my best. I gave all I had. So true, I didn't sleep a lot, but you know, um, when I look at them now, I say, ah, could have been better than that. So ah, I got a little, I got some regrets, but you know, that's, that's how an artist's life is. Uh, and I learned a lot also from that. That's, uh, I, I learned that I was only human and I had mm -hmm. to, to learn how to organize myself better than I did at that time. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because they had 40 planeswalkers too. It was like, that, that was just, you know, an onslaught. And when you are somebody who is, who is known for plane, planeswalker art, the, the way you are, I mean, like, I, I thought about that, but I mean, like, if it's any consolation, I, I love them. I mean, like, I love Narset from that set. It's she, she looks fantastic. Uh, that, she, Narset is something, you know, I'm still, this one is okay for me, uh, more or less. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but uh, it's, um, yeah. Uh, but I, I'm really, um, I, I remember when I was first asked uh, to make, to, to paint a plans walker for magic. It was an R set already back in the days of right. the top sets and all. And uh, I was even asked to uh, design her plans walker costume, which she didn't have before. And, um, and it came pretty early in my magic career. Yeah. So, and and, I, and I, even now, when I get a paint planes walker, I still remember what the art director told me at that time. It was Jeremy Jarvis, art directing uh, back in the days. And he told me, okay, I'm gonna assign this to you. It's a planes walker. It's the first, you, you're gonna get a paint and you have to know it's a big deal. So what I read was, please don't mess up with the <laughs> 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 And uh, he, he made me understand something I already knew, but he made me understand that it, it, it was a big deal and I, I had to really be careful with that type of cards. And even today, when I see a Planeswalker assignment in my inbox, I can, I can almost hear his voice. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Planeswalker, be careful with that. And you, know, you, you were saying that um, magic artists, uh, seem to be very humble, but I think that it's only normal to be, it's not something you have to work for being humble. When you are, uh, I mean, magic's been around for 25 years now. Um, most of them know about the game and uh, most, of, most of us know how important it is, how big magic is. I mean, it's legendary. Mm -hmm. And when you have the chance to be part of the of magic artists, I mean, how can you not be humbled by that? And uh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's a fair point. I think maybe, I guess, because, I'm, and maybe this is more for the visual arts, I guess, but maybe because you guys are, you know, by nature, you're behind the canvas. You're not necessarily out for stardom the way that somebody who is uh, an actor or a musician is. Mm -hmm. And because you are sort of like, maybe not shy, but at least like a lower key than the other forms of art, maybe that is why you guys seem to all have, um, just a little more, um, just like you're more down to earth, I'd say. Yes, I think, and I, and I also think that it's only my opinion, but I think that's the way it should be when you choose to be an artist, that's because you wanna be hidden behind your illustrations. I mean, if you want the world to know about your face and what you have to say and who you are, please become an actor. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I think that's, uh, it's um, it's normal for an artist to be, you know, uh, uh, just like, no, please look at my illustrations. <laughs> I'm not interesting by myself. Just look at my illustrations. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, and I think that when you lose that and when you start to think that yourself is more important than your art, it's getting dangerous, I think. Right, then you'll lose the spark, so to speak, you know? And that's absolutely true because even today, um, 
I, when I'm receiving my assignments for magic, it's not something like, yes, of course, you know, it's not normal for me. It's still a privilege. And that's why I'm always trying, you know, to, to push my envelope to, to get better and to improve my skills and all, because I mean, you're part of magic, so yes. yeah. It's it's I mean it's pretty epic and it's it's a legacy because your stuff will live on and and in in I mean in in perpetuity because magic is not going to go anywhere. I mean I know that's not everybody you know everybody the the doom the doomsday say or saying like oh magic blah, it's not gonna be around. I'm like listen listen, it mm. it's gonna be around. Um mm. and um I guess um my final question would be um Will there ever be a, um, I'd love to see an art book. Is there any plans for, for that to ever to come to fruition? I wish it could happen. Um, the, um, the problem I have with my, um, my illustrations um, is that for many of them, I don't have reproduction rights. So I could, uh, if I were to, to build an art book, I could put some magic inside because the people at Wizards are understanding enough to know that sometimes it could be cool to allow the artist to, you know, to sell reproductions of the work. So thank you. But it's not the case for all companies or for all publishing houses. So for me, I would love to, to build an art book, but aside from, um, from my magic work, I wouldn't be able to put my Game of Thrones work. I wouldn't be able to put my Lord of the Rings work or the Star Wars work or the Warhammer work because all these companies don't allow us to do that. And it would be really frustrating for me because yeah. aside from my professional work, I, I've, I've been around in that career for 15 years and it's been 15 years where i've been so busy that i didn't have the time to have um, personal work production so aside from my magic work i couldn't show anything else so you know i would like to but i think that the art book wouldn't be how i would like it to be so i don't know and they wouldn't make an exception like you couldn't talk to them and say like this is um you know just for posterity there's i mean it's 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 like a hard no from all of the the companies across the board you know when we are saying like star wars we are we're talking about disney um, right 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 so they don't really care i mean i'm just the tiniest tiny illustrator one among so many others who made illustrations for them, they don't have time to care. So I have to play the game. Yeah, I mean, this is, I, I understand that completely, but at the same time, like they, I, I, I mean, I just am shocked that they would not take advantage of the fact that they have somebody who is so iconic doing art for them that is so fantastic. I mean, it's just, it, and it seems like, you know, if they needed to like take a little money off the top, I mean, like it would make money. I'm just saying like Disney, and George Lucas, come on guys, like, we need an art book. I just, you know, I'm just, I'm just uh, saying there. It's even harder for me to understand that is that I am French and in France, uh, artists' rights are pretty different from what it is in the US, for example. So it really took me a while to, you know, to kind of, okay, that's the way it works in the US, where you get the, this copyright thing going on, which means you kind of give your illustration forever. <laughs> Here, right. It belongs to you now, while in France, it's not like that at all, that no matter who is commissioning the, um, the illustration, you still own a part of your work because it's yours, no matter the IP. So, and that's, um, huge difference but you know that knowing that uh i mean 99 percent of my clients are in the us i had to to do is how it is but it still feels sometimes a little unfair because i mean 
what would it, I mean, what would it change? I don't think it would change anything. I, I mean, at the very least, I would, I would, I would ask that you, if you, I mean, I don't know if you've asked them before, but you know, I mean, or even maybe had fans sign um, a petition on your behalf, uh, we could do it very respectfully because I feel like it's something that I would like to see and that it would generate interest in their, their, you know, their, um, their pro not their product, but their, their, um, their product. And I just, um, it's, 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 that's rough to hear that somebody who is established as you is, is not able to, um, you know, work that in because you have the, that's a double-edged sword. You have the prestige of working on such iconic things, but then having to, you can't really put it in your, in your best of, you know, files. Yes, yes, that's, uh, it, it, yes, it's weird because you work for years and you work hard and, and you're trying, you know, to, to bring something to these IPs and all, but still at the end, you, you sign the contract at first and you have to respect it, so. I, yeah, well, if, if you're listening to uh, Disney and all the, you know, <laughs> and Warhammer, like, get, get it together. People love this stuff. Come on now. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for the, for for um, taking the time today. This has been fantastic, and um, I I could ask you a thousand and one questions, but I will not keep you much longer. But thanks again. And thank you very much for having me. I hope I was easy to understand. Oh my God, you were fantastic. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I was the one with alarms going off and dogs barking. I mean, it, it gave it a real, a really colorful flavor. <laughs> that's that's one that's one way of putting it. <laughs> And say hi, hi to Dougie. Hi, oh, yeah, I've, I've got four of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> hi, Dougies. <laughs> they just perked up. Actually, they like they literally were like, hmm? <laughs> yes, talking to me. <laughs> well, you have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Bye. Well, I hope you got a lot of good information from that, and also you got to see what it's like to have a fire alarm go off during an interview. I still have the heat of embarrassment on me. Well, that's it for today. So I just want to remind everybody to like, subscribe, and comment if you want to be entered to win in our weekly giveaways that we do with each video. And until next time, I got a scoop.